I try to imagine what it must have been like on that first Easter morning when there wasn't the, the knowledge of the resurrection, when instead it was all about death and disappointment. And I imagine Mary Magdalene coming to the tomb in order to care for Jesus' body, to prepare it for burial. The story was over. The hope was gone. And then someone shows up in the garden and Mary can't recognize him. Thinking that he's the gardener, she says, Sir, tell me where you've taken the body so that I may, may bring it back here. Imagine that, a woman literally thinking that she could carry the dead weight of a man. All of that grief, the heaviness of that, physically as well as spiritually. And just then, Jesus speaks her name. Mary, he says, and her eyes are open and she can see Jesus because she has been seen by Jesus. Her name has been called by the risen Lord and now she is part of the resurrection story. That happens for all of us. In baptism, Jesus has called all of us by name and knows every one of us. And we too now are part of the resurrection story. Her mourning was turned into dancing. I'm going to leave you with this hymn from our newest worship resource, All Creation Sings, about the transformation of Mary's grief into joy. Happy Easter, dear church. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Just a brief announcement here at the beginning of the service. Uh, just as a reminder, in this room, uh, we are not going to be having any singing together. However, if you really want to sing at an Easter service, at 10 o'clock this morning, we're going to be gathering out on the lawn. And so you can come and sing to your heart's content along with the music this morning if you want to join us for take two uh, this morning. You're welcome back, by the way. There is plenty of room out there. There will be a couple times where I'm going to invite you to participate in the service, however. One of them will be in the traditional Easter acclamation, which you'll see here in just a moment on the screen, but it kind of goes like this. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then you say, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. So here we go. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. So that'll happen a couple times in the service, just to let you know. Um, when that shows up on the screen, please uh, participate. And the other place will be responding to the prayers, and then uh, you can join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together here this morning. Okay.
so with that, many thanks uh, to those of you who are here today. And we get started with worship today with a treat. We've got some trumpet players and Gloria here with our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Thanks to our two trumpet students from Luther College in Decorah, Iowa. That would be my child and Michelle's child. And you even saw maybe another cameo from somebody else who might look familiar, but tough to see with the mask. So for those of you who are joining us here this morning, maybe this is your first time back with us here. Um, we are also being joined this morning by our uh, congregation that's uh, watching the live stream right now. And so you'll see here, this is the camera. There's another one over in the corner. By the way, we're going to switch back and forth between these. So if you are misbehaving, that one is going to catch you because it's looking right at you. Um, we are just really thankful for all the ways that we can gather together for worship, including our online uh, folks joining us here today as well. With that, we gather together as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks now for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, 
for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us compassion on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread, spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anoint, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were opposed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did not, that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him in, they put him to death by hanging him on the tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commended us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one who, the one ordained by God as judged of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading is from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, 
for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. Of the, righteous. the right hand of the Lord acts violently, val valently, sorry. <laughs> um, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the right hand acts val valent. Sorry, <laughs> I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me solely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Hear. The righteous, righteousness, I'm sorry, righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as the first importance what I have in turn has received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at, the, at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is, that is with me. Whether then it was, was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us for the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. You know, there are definitely some things in this world that we can't escape. It's that time of year right now. They've bumped it back a month. Maybe you've just finished taking care of yours. I did it a couple weeks ago. It's tax season. Can't escape them. Right now, I mean, it seems like we just can't escape this crazy pandemic that's out there, although we're doing our best to be safe. But, boy, it's just hanging in there with us. Hard to escape, and not only just the pandemic itself, but also the changes that it's brought 
to every part of our lives. And I also know that none of us can escape the march of time in our lives. Spending too much time, though, thinking on these things can really make us worried or, or even afraid. In fact, when we listen to the story from Mark this morning about the women who make their way to the empty tomb, approaching a place where death had already had the final answer, we hear that they were, in fact, afraid. Why? Because they knew what they were going to find. And it was hard to make their way there to find what they knew was there. A reality that they were not going to be able to escape. But instead, what they find is something very unexpected, something that should have been impossible. The stone was rolled away, and Jesus' body was gone. And there's a man sitting in there, dressed in a white robe, who says to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know why you're here, but you're not going to find death here. Jesus has been raised, he's not here. Can you imagine that? They full well knew what to expect when they made their way to the tomb that early morning. They went there fearing the worst, but what they found instead was something far from their expectations, and they didn't know how to handle it. They were amazed. They were terrified. But they were still afraid. I spent some time recently with someone approaching the end of their life. I've got this incredible fear that rests deep inside of me each time I visit with this person because I'm worried that this is going to be the last time I get a chance to visit. I know what's going to happen. I full well know this is going to be the possibility. Death is close. But, much like the women making that long walk on the way up to the tomb that morning, who were surprised, not by fear. By the time I leave my visits with this beloved saint, I find myself uplifted, amazed, in my own faith as well. And with what is one of the most interesting of circumstances as of late with these visits, these conversations have found their way to giving thanks. It's sounding an awful lot like the psalm reading for this morning. Just listen to what Psalm 8, 118 has to say. It says... This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. With each visit with someone who knows that the end is near, echoes of this verse from Psalm 118 have been resounding throughout our conversations. And we spend time not just talking about what is very present, but also giving thanks for the days that, that they've shared with family, a, a lifetime with friends, but also being hopeful for maybe a day or two more to come. Never denying the reality of what is to come or the fear about what that might look like or feel like, but always, always, always being thankful for this very day that we're living in right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. With each visit, I find myself on my way home thanking God for their ministry to me and the ways that they continue to give me strength in my own life of faith. Look, on the one hand, I'm afraid this is, like I said, this might be the last time we share together, worry deeply for them and for their families. And on the other hand, encouraged to be putting one foot in front of the other. They are and have been to me much like the man in the empty tomb. I can only imagine that this was in some way what the women felt early on that morning, staring into an empty tomb. They must have been confused. I mean, we know they were afraid. Scripture tells us that much. They were also amazed at what God had done in the world right in front of their eyes. Look at what God has done. Now look, you would have thought that this, of all things, would have given someone enough strength to boldly run right out of there and proclaim God's victory of life over death loudly to the world. But, it's not quite the way that Mark's Gospel ends. We don't hear the Gospel ending with this joyous proclamation of the Gospel. Instead, we encounter what are the last four words in Mark's Gospel. They ran out of there. They didn't tell anyone. 
Why? Because they were afraid. They were afraid. They went to the tomb afraid and in grief, but were confronted by the best news of all. Jesus wasn't here. He had been raised from the dead. This person in the tomb says, don't be afraid. But they left that way nonetheless. Yet. It's not the end of the gospel story. Because we wouldn't be sitting here celebrating what is a, an amazing triumph of death, of life over death here on Easter Sunday if they didn't go tell somebody about this. But in the moment, they weren't quite sure what to do. As I said earlier, when I walk up the door for my visits with this blessed saint, I approach with fear. And oftentimes... I still have a little bit hanging on there with me when I leave. But their stories of how they are dealing with their struggles helps to uplift me in my faith and share them with you here this morning. How God's faithfulness is at work even in the most difficult and dire of situations, calming the storm, even bringing life unto death. Maybe you came here to church this morning afraid. Afraid of the virus floating in the air, afraid of encountering somebody on the road that wasn't paying attention, afraid that you might come into this worship service today and hear a pastor that was going to preach judgment at you for some reason or the other. Maybe you're here afraid this morning. Dear friends in Christ, take heart from the stories that I'm sharing here today. If there's one thing I know about our God, it's that God will find a way to show you just how much He loves you and always has. I started this morning by talking about a couple things that we can't escape. But there's one more thing I'd like to share with you here before we close. It's the reason why we gather here every year on Easter Sunday to celebrate what is happening here in this moment. That we need to hear that we cannot escape God's love, which keeps coming to us, showing up in our lives every single day. On the cross, Jesus took all our brokenness, our fear, our sin, and died with it. Why? To set you free from all of it. And when he was raised three days later, Jesus even broke the bond of the greatest power this world holds over us. Death. This is what God's love looks like. It hangs in there with you. It is gracious and forgiving. And it endures above all else. Remember that you are loved. Remember that when you look in the mirror every day and see the face of someone that God loves so much. The face of someone for whom Jesus died on the cross. Remember this when you look at someone else and see the same love of God reflected back at you in the eyes of, of someone for whom Jesus died on the cross. Remember it when you look at the cross cross that's empty. A cross that's empty because nothing in this world, not even death, can stop God from loving you. That is the beautiful part of the story. It's why we adorn the cross the way we do today, with white and gold and beauty. And this love that God shares from you, you can't escape it. No matter how hard you try. Remember that you are loved, always and forever. Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear and answer us in steadfast love. At the end of each petition, I invite you to respond to hear us, O God, with your mercy is great. Let us pray. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible on the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. This morning, we uplift especially Arletta, Susie, Mark, and Stuart, and all those who weigh heavily on our hearts and minds at this time. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy that we share here at home and at work and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us, proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and in whose name we pray. Amen. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and in whose name we pray. Amen. Soon, we will share a communion together. But now, we remember what happened on that night and the way that God promises to show up here with us in Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So you should have received uh, the elements on the way into the worship space today. Is there anyone here uh, in the building that did not receive elements this morning? Well done at the door. So um, during this time, I'll distribute uh, like we normally would. Uh, some of you have got our fancy new uh, cups. They look like a little chalice. Does anybody have those? Okay, so these are a little easier to open. You can find the bread on the bottom of the chalice. You can tear off the bottom. And the wine is on the top. For those of you that have the, the kind of the, the plastic topped ones, if you want to make sure that you open that up right now, and everybody, we're going to take out our bread and we're going to share the bread together. You can take off your masks here for just a moment. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you can find your way to the wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you for putting your masks back on. You can dispose of the empty cups on the way out the door this morning. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and in whose name we pray. Amen. Okay. Just a couple of announcements. I wanted to say thanks. Uh, thanks, Tanya, for reading this morning. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to our musicians, for Gloria and Justin and Austin and Morgan and myself, and Nancy and Clark uh, for sharing gifts this morning. Uh, we are going to continue to uh, record these ahead of time and have them available for us in worship. Uh, but we're just so glad for the incredible amount of work that's going into getting these ready. Also, many thanks to, um, to Michelle and Rael and to Sam who have put in hours uh, to try to make sure that we have uh, the space here to, to have worship together, but also that we can have folks joining us here online this morning as well. Thanks to the ushers this morning and for those who have helped uh, just to make sure that we make our way in and out of the service uh, in an orderly fashion. Just an update about what's coming up with worship times. Okay, so as I said, if you are really wanting to come back and do some singing this morning and have two Easter Sunday services, which you are welcome to do, uh, 10 o'clock we're going to be on the East Lawn, uh, just like we were in the summer. If, uh, it's supposed to be beautiful, it's supposed to be in the 60s, sun's out, doesn't look like there's much wind. Thank you God for not having snow today. I don't know if you remember this or not, but last year it was 60 degrees on the Saturday before Easter, and then Easter, I think we had a blizzard, if I remember right. It was ridiculous. Thank you. Okay. I am rejoicing in this day that the Lord has made. Um, then we'll also have an 1130 service today back here in the building. Um, starting from here on out, and this could change as well, depending on uh, how many people are coming to which services. Um, we're going to have worship at 830 in here for the time being live stream, and then we'll have a, t a 9.15 Zoom service, and then an 11.30 service back in the building here. That's going to be for the short run as we try to figure out what's coming next. And so I um, wanted to say 
you're welcome to join us in any of those. Wednesday evenings, we're still gathering for 6.30 p.m. live stream worship on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Um, we have a silent auction April 11th, next Sunday, at the county seat. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Looking forward to that. And then we also have one more training session left next Saturday the 10th at 8. Okay, great. We're still in need of volunteers. If you're interested in helping to be a part of the service, uh, you saw that the work is necessary, but maybe not that difficult. But these guys made it look easy. So, I mean, it. you did a good job at the door. Thank you for everybody who was helping out over there. So, uh, with that... Um, I just want to say thank you again for being here for worship today. It is a pleasure to gather together in this space. The space isn't holy because of the space. A space is made holy when God is in the midst of us and God promises to be wherever two or three are gathered in his name. And that is here with us today. Amen. With that, receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.